Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Scheidemantle, and I am a professor of Biblical Studies at Geneva College. It's a privilege uh, of mine to be asked by uh, your pastor, Pastor Mark Helsel, to uh, do a Lenten devotional. And I'm actually standing here uh, in Jerusalem, uh, in Israel. We are overlooking the Kidron Valley, and you'll see off in the distance the Mount of Olives. So we are standing in a very important place where many of the, uh, many of the important events of the, the life of Jesus took place, particularly uh, during this time of, of Lent. Uh, what I'd like to do here in our time that we have together is to reflect together on Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, which is recorded for us uh, in Matthew chapter 26. Before I read from that passage, though, I would like to point out that over my shoulder here, we actually have a church down in the valley, just at the bottom of the garden, uh, just at the bottom of the Mount of Olives. There's a church called the Church of All Nations, or the Garden of Gethsemane Church, which commemorates the place where Jesus went to pray on the night that he was uh, arrested. Let me read for you this passage from Matthew chapter 26, which tells that story. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death, Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And Jesus came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for a second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found his disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See my betrayer is at hand. May the Lord bless the reading of this, his holy word, from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Let me make a couple of observations here on this on this passage. Again, we have Jesus on the night that he's going to be betrayed. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying. Jesus knows that he's to be arrested that night and then the next day he's to give his life on a cross. And so here in this passage we see Jesus in his humanity, you know, realizing what's to come, the pain, the, the travail, the uh, the difficulty uh, that he's going to face. And so he, pay, he takes his disciples with him, including Peter and James and John here to the innermost part of this garden, and he asks them to remain with him as he prays to his Father. Now the content of Jesus' prayer, we know, is that Jesus prays to the Father and says, Lord, uh, Father, if this is your will, might this cup of of, uh, of punishment, might this cup of retribution, might this cup of pain be taken away from me. But then Jesus says, but not my will, your will be done. Because you see, Jesus, when he's confronted in this passage with the reality of his death, he could have done what the first Adam did. And that is the first Adam, when he experienced temptation, and in a moment of weakness, the first Adam gave in, and he sinned, and he, uh, uh, he 
was unfaithful to his calling. But Jesus comes as the perfect human, the one true human, the second Adam. And when he's confronted with a moment of weakness, a moment of temptation, Jesus, as the second Adam, maintains faithfulness to his Father and ends up praying to his Father, not my will, but your will be done. And so Jesus, as the second Adam, uh, here in the Garden of Gethsemane, submits his will to the Father's will and gives his life on the cross as a ransom for many. But also in this passage, we see not only the perfection of Jesus as the second Adam, but we see our human imperfection. Jesus takes the three disciples, Peter, James, and John, with him into the innermost part of the garden. And Jesus asks his friends to remain awake with him and to wait with him and to pray with him. And his friends fall asleep. In many ways, Peter, James, and John forsake their friendship with Jesus. They fall asleep and they do not remain awake with him, supportive of him. Instead, they fall asleep. In their moment of weakness, uh, they fail in their friendship to Jesus. And in so many different ways, we, in our human weakness, show ourselves to be frail and inconsistent very often, most often, in need of a Savior. So in this passage that we've just read in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see the perfection of Jesus, and we see our human imperfection. It reminds me of the wonderful passage of Scripture from the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, where Paul, writing about Jesus, says uh, about Jesus, that you, O Lord, made him who knew not sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus, the one who knew not sin, became sin for us on the cross. And as Christ was on the cross, the Father placed the sin of all of God's people on the shoulders of Jesus. Jesus became sin for frail human beings like you and like me, and he died on the cross, a sinner's death, so that sinners like you and me might be declared on the part of the Father, might be declared to be righteous and forgiven, and on the virtue of Christ's righteousness, actually be declared to be the righteousness of God. That's the gospel, isn't it? The perfect Christ who came and succeeded where the first Adam failed, Jesus came and succeeded. Where we tend to fail, we need one who succeeds. And so, place your faith and trust in Christ. Isn't that what the Lenten season is all about? It's a time for us to remember our frailty as human beings and our need to trust in one who is not frail, one who stands up under temptation, one who even submits to the will of the Father. And that is our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus. Trust in Him. He's worth trusting in. Amen.